Thank you for this uh, warm welcome, Mr. Johansson, and I would like to thank the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for inviting me here today to share with you uh, some of the ongoing work and activities of the Council of Europe in the area of uh, equality and in particular gender equality. Um, you may be uh, aware of Council of Europe work in this uh, field. For many years, uh, the Council of Europe has contributed a number of standards and uh, um, policies with regard to advancing the gender equality agenda. And two of the milestone achievements include uh, two conventions which have uh, made, we hope, a difference in uh, the life of women uh, throughout Europe and beyond. And they include the Council of Europe uh, uh, Convention on Preventing and Combating Trafficking in Human Beings and the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, otherwise known as the Istanbul Convention, which we hope uh, will enter into force very soon. We expect it in the next few months. Standards and uh, legislation and policies are very important, but uh, we're all uh, aware that the gender equality agenda has not necessarily uh, gone at full speed and taken us to where we want to be. Uh, therefore, uh, there is more and more need for a focus on uh, implementing those standards in practice in order to advance the equality uh, agenda. And in this respect, in the recent couple of years, the Council of, of Europe has shifted uh, uh, its activities more towards support for the member states to implement existing standards in this area. In 2012, the Council of Europe launched what we call the Transversal Programme on Gender Equality, uh, with the main uh, objective to provide the necessary support and activities to the member states to implement the existing uh, treaties and other standard-setting um, uh, uh, instruments. Uh, the Transversal program includes a number of structures which all uh, try to uh, provide the um, program with the su necessary support and the financial means for the implementation of its activities. And at the center of this program, we have the Gender Equality Commission with representatives from the member states. Uh, second very important structure is the um, Gender Equality uh, National Focal Points in all the 47 member states of the Council of Europe, which make sure that they bring the problems and issues um, uh, arising in the member states to the focus of the work and activities of the uh, Council of Europe in this area. And last but not least, the gender equality rapporteurs. Uh, mainstreaming is one of the key challenges in, um, in uh, the work in the area of gender equality. Therefore, the Council of Europe has tried to um, make sure that uh, the gender equality uh, issues make their way into the into the agendas and into the working activities uh, of the other steering committees in the House, including the monitoring mechanisms. Now, the activities of the Council of Europe and its different structures, which I just listed, are guided by uh, and framed into the context of the implementation of the Council of Europe Gender Equality Strategy 2014-2017, which was adopted by the committee of ministers last year with full consensus. The strategy has five principal uh, objectives um, that it um, uh, will target uh, to achieve in the next uh, 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 four years. And they include uh, combating gender stereotypes and sexism with particular focus on media and the image of women or stereotyping in education. The second one is guaranteeing equal access of women to justice with particular access on access to justice for women victims of violence, as well as combating or trying to uh, resolve uh, problems related to persistent barriers that prevent women from uh, exceeding justice, or the lack and gaps in the data and research segregated by sex. The third objective is uh, preventing and combating violence against women. And here the focus is, of course, in uh, our efforts to promote the signature ratification and the entry into force of the Istanbul Convention. The fourth objective uh, um, builds on activities around achieving balanced participation of women and men in political and public decision making. And the fifth one is gender mainstreaming. Uh, 
Um, I would just give you a little bit of an overview of ongoing work in these five objectives and the priorities that we are dealing with at the moment. Uh, in the area of stereotyping, uh, uh, which is uh, combating gender stereotyping and sexism, uh, we organized last year a conference um, in the Netherlands. It was hosted by the Netherlands with the participation of representatives from all the 47 member states, media, journalists, private sector, and so on. And it dealt with a number of issues uh, uh, evolving around uh, stereotyping and sexism, lack of leadership of women in the media, um, gender equality and uh, freedom of speech, uh, the new technologies uh, as a way uh, to advance the gender equality agenda, and so on. Now, the, the advantage of such gathers are that not only did the member states and their representatives bring to the table the problems that they face in uh, dealing with this issue, but there is also uh, an opportunity to exchange good practices and experiences. And after the conference, uh, uh, a compilation of such good practices was uh, made available to the member states uh, for, um, to support them in their work to deal with this issue. The conference came also with a number of uh, um, recommendations on what should members, should member states do in order to, uh, to combat sexism and gender stereotypes, whether it is building alliances between the states and the media, whether it is about putting in place measures to promote leadership of women in the media sector, or whether it is about awareness raising and education and how to combat such stereotypes from an early age. Uh, there is a report on this. I have put a few copies uh, down there. You would find them um, uh, on your desk if they are of interest to you. Uh, in the second um, uh, objective, which is guaranteeing equal access of women to justice, uh, our work at the moment is focused uh, in three main uh, um, areas. The first one is um, um, collecting more information and data with regard to, uh, to a lack of access to justice for women victims of violence. And in this respect, a hearing organized in Paris in December last year, uh, again, tried to uh, identify some of the um, key issues around uh, this area. Uh, what are the main barriers that women victims of violence face when they try to access uh, uh, justice? And it came up with a number of uh, recommendations and conclusions which were made available to the member states. And yet again, a compilation of good practices in all the 47 member states, or at least most of them, which provided us with such information, which has been made available uh, for reference in, uh, in future work. Uh, a second activity on uh, this particular objective will take place in June uh, in Paris this year, and it will focus on how to deal with this gap which has clearly been identified with regard to lack of data and research segregated by sex. It's obviously very difficult to get the information and to have a clear picture of the situation in the member states if you do not have data. And uh, it will bring together representatives of several uh, regional and other international organizations in order to try to coordinate and come up with uh, uh, some recommendations for future work in this area. Last but not least, again, in this particular uh, uh, area of work, uh, next year we will organize another event which will focus on persistent barriers that women face when they try to access justice and uh, also come up with a summary of all the three activities uh, under this particular objective. The first one is um, uh, violence against women and domestic violence. And as I mentioned earlier on, our main uh, area of work in this uh, particular uh, field of action is uh, promotion of the Istanbul Convention. Very briefly to you, a little bit of information uh, for those of you who are not aware with this convention. Uh, it is the first legally binding treaty in Europe, and in terms of its scope, it's the most advanced treaty internationally. And it evolves around the four uh, 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 traditional piece which have become a standard now for any new legally binding document, and that is uh, the first P, preventing, prevention of violence. The second one is protection of victims. The third one is prosecution of perpetrators. And as I say, the fourth P is slightly to the right, because we talk about integrated policies uh, when dealing with the issue of violence against women. Uh, one of the added value of the convention is, of course, in the fact that uh, uh, violence against women now, for the state parties, those countries that will uh, ratify and uh, adhere to the convention, 
protecting women and taking measures to prevent violence becomes an obligation, a legal obligation. It's no longer a matter of goodwill uh, to take action in this particular area. Uh, it also introduces a whole set of new criminal offenses which were no, uh, not covered by any previous uh, treaty in this area, such as, for example, um, physical and psychological violence, stalking, uh, sexual violence including rape, sexual harassment, forced marriage, female genital mutilation, forced abortion and forced sterilization. With regard to progress with signatures and ratifications, we're advancing relatively very well. The, the convention opened for signature only three years ago, almost three years ago, on the 11th of May in Istanbul, uh, Turkey, which is where the name of the convention comes from. Um, and so far we have 24 member states that have signed the convention and nine member states that have ratified Spain only last, uh, last week. With the 10th signature, which we hope will be coming soon, uh, there is a period of three months to prepare uh, the formal entry into force of the convention. And after that, the setting up of the monitoring body, the group of experts, Gravio, which will ensure that the member states comply with the obligations contained in the uh, convention. Um, there is interesting information with regard to how the convention has already become a common policy uh, uh, framework for the member states of the Council of Europe, despite the fact that it has yet to enter into force. And this information comes from the fourth round of monitoring of the analytical, uh, of the Committee of Ministers uh, uh, recommendation on the protection of women against violence. And uh, since the monitoring of this recommendation began in 2005, obviously there has been quite some progress with regard to uh, uh, converging policy and legislation in all the Council of Europe member states, uh, a trend towards uh, criminalizing more and more forms of violence against women, including forced marriage and stalking. The comprehensiveness of a national policy to prevent and combat violence against women has increased more uh, member states are setting up national coordinating bodies to deal with the issue of violence against women and domestic violence. There is an increase in efforts on the side of the member states to invest more in education and in training of professionals, and uh, uh, more and more efforts also to include uh, a part of the uh, awareness raising efforts in the education curriculum from the very early age. However, the report also shows that uh, there is uh, still a long road to go and quite a few uh, challenges ahead, uh, in particular with regard to the fact that only one of the forms of violence against women that should be penalized, and that is physical violence, is criminalized by 46 of the 47 member states of the Council of Europe. Other forms, including rape and sexual violence, are not universally criminalized. Only four member states have national policies that address all nine forms of violence against women, for which specific measures have been put in place. However, five member states still have in place policies and strategies that target violence within the family or domestic violence unit only. The vast majority of the member states are not able to provide figures regarding the allocation of sufficient financial resources to address violence against women, while financial commitment, we know all, is crucial to ensure legislation and policies are effectively implemented. In about a third of member states, the provision of shelter beds, specifically for women and children victims of domestic violence, is very low compared to the recommended standards. Provision of specialized services for women victims of sexual violence, in particular medical and psychological support, advice concerning possible legal redress and empowerment towards the recovery is still lagging behind the provisions for victims of domestic violence. As I mentioned, while those data and this information that we have collected from 46 out of the 47 member states on the basis of a questionnaire which was revised to uh, uh, reflect the, the, the key provisions of the Istanbul Convention, uh, while there is this trend of converging policies and building them around the Istanbul Convention, the gaps are still there with regard to the measures to be put in place by the member states. So there is still a lot of challenges ahead and a long way to go before we can talk about fully comprehensive measures 
to combat violence against women and domestic violence in all the member states. Uh, there is more information about this, uh, the findings of this report. It's available on the website of the Council of Europe for those that may wish to, to take a look. Um, to conclude, um, uh, I just wanted to uh, stress that in um, our work and efforts uh, to uh, achieve the, uh, uh, the objectives uh, as outlined by the strategy of the Council of Europe, we're working very closely in uh, cooperation and coordination with other regional and international organizations in order to ensure synergies, but also build on the added value uh, that each and every one of those actors in this area has to offer and to avoid any duplication and unnecessary efforts. So I will stop there and we'll be happy to take a couple of questions if there are any. Thank you. <laughs>